Hey, Paula. Asha, I recognize that desk hey, anywhere. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. How about you? I'm great. Good. Good. I can't see everybody in the training room, but I see people there. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited for you all to be part of uh, this icon. This one's real special to me. These are my personal friends and um, top agent in my previous team leader role in New Mexico. So I'm excited to have them. They are on their coaching call from 10 to 1030 their time. So they're going to be jumping on just as soon as that call in. So it'll be right at 1131 probably. Hey, Andrea. Who else in the training room? It's Diana and Tom. Good to see you guys. Hey, Steph. Hey. So I will share with you a little, hey, Stace, about Tigo and Tracy before they even jump on. Uh, Tigo and Tracy is a husband and wife team in New Mexico and Albuquerque. And uh, they have been um, in the business while well, I them share that part, part of the story, but I will, I will just tell you my personal experience with them is um, they jumped in Kelly Williams. They've never been with another brokerage and um, they built this amazing, massive, massive business, massive. Um, and they are coming on live. There they are. They are coming on live to visit with us. Hey, Tigo. Hey, Tracy. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. We're so Bill, glad that you guys, you guys Bill, look so professional. Bill, Bill Johnson says hi. Come, get, oh, Bill, get Bill in here. Get Bill in here. Come, let oh me, my come, God. Come, See, come, come say hi. Mind. Come say hi, Bill. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Give me a second. Okay. Hi, <laughs> Bill. Hey. He's right here. Right here. Good Hi. to see you. How Good are you? you? I'm doing great. I'm you doing look great. great. Like old home week. Old yeah, home yeah. Week, the, so. Venturi's let me hang out with him every once in a while, you know. So yeah. Every once in a while you get to hang out with him. Well, we're <laughs> going to get started, all right? Okay, well, so good to see you. Good to see you too, yeah. Bill. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. All right. So, my friends... I got it's so good to see you guys. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for saying yes to be on our icon series. Um, you know, the epitome of icon. Uh, when I think about that, there's so many in our Keller Williams ecosystem, but you know, you two, uh, I have personally experienced your growth over the years and I have not been there, you know, next month it'll be five years. Wow. So, uh, but you know, back in the day when I was there, you guys built this incredible business and incredible lives for the people that joined you on your team. And I was just so thrilled that we were finally able to connect. I know at one point you were going to make a trip out here and do live. And then of course, you know, COVID hit. So I'm going to let this kind of turn over to you. You guys are old pros. Um, and I, I may pop in and ask questions. And at the end, we'll, we'll get uh, questions from our group. So sure, please thanks. take it away. We're so excited to be here because you know, like you said, it's been almost a year in the making, right? And we were excited to come there and we still will sometime, um, hopefully sooner than later. Someday. So I see we have, let's see, a few people at home and it looks like we're at the market center as well. I see. Yes. Uh, yep, I see somebody waving there. Good. Hi, Hi guys. Center. How many people are in the office there? How many? Just a couple. Center. In the car, in the office, at yeah. home. Yep. Yep. In a and closet, you know, in a bedroom. But, we're in Oklahoma, so we have stragglers. So just be okay with that. Hey, we're in the land of Manana. We know all about it. Yeah, you do. So, you yeah, know, you, you know do. about the land of Manana, right? It's yeah, Manana, Manana. So we um, have a whole outline. In and and if it's not what you want to hear, you just stop us, interrupt us. If you have a question, whatever, we're good. So I'm Tracy. 
Tigo. We're obviously a husband and wife team. I started out in real estate first in 2002 when I had a four and five-year-old at home and Tigo worked elsewhere full-time, very regimented hours. He wouldn't get home till about six and he did not have any flexibility in his mm -hmm. schedule. And I did not have babysitters. I didn't have a go-to person. And I thought, well, I'll just do real estate part-time because you know how we all get into real estate because exactly. we like open houses and and we've done some properties flipped, sort of, not we, really. We've done a little bit of. We'd sold our own home, and, and we had done some, anyway, some rental stuff. But, but yeah, it was kind of it, it. You just kind of fell in, not fell into it. That's not fair. You were, sure. you know, you got retired from your corporate job, and you, Intel laid me off. Yeah, and but it was great timing because the kids were at home then. And so I spent five years at home, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I had this bad habit. I was in human resources before and I was in bad habit of watching help wanted ads because I'd done that for 15 years and I saw an ad for selling land and it happened to be the community where my parents lived. And I went, oh, I could sell that all day long. I know where the springs are. I know where you can find arrowheads. We hike it every weekend. So I went in and said, hire me. And uh, they did. So I started out doing land and it was very slow. I was very stupid. I did not know that they'd already sold all the prime lots and the only ones left were ones nobody could really build on. But I learned a lot because the uh, QB was really good and like every day would just teach me all about real estate. Well, I think the lesson from that was it doesn't matter um, where you're at or, or what you're doing in, in the real estate business. You're always going to be learning something, even if you don't sell a thing, right? Now you have to have the, the ability to, to, to grind through that and realize it's like, okay, well, hold on. I'm not doing something right. I've learned a lot, but I'm not selling anything. So, you know, got to make a change. And that's when you, you found uh, KW. Exactly. So for my first year, I was with a, a small independent um, company that really only worked land. And then I interviewed other eight other brokerages and landed at KW, which we feel like changed our life, right? Pretty um, much. Actually, the thing that changed our life was this. That is what changed our life. And so we do have chat. chat I open. wish I could say, Stephanie, you were the one that handed me that book, but it was actually Tina, your, your predecessor yeah. who hired you as, as when she retired. Um, but, uh, it, uh, yeah, I'm just like, oh, oh, it's already, oh, this is how you do it. Okay, great. Well, let's do that. So that, too that's bad basically somebody, what we did. Yeah, yeah. It's too bad. Somebody didn't give us that sooner because, you know, we mm -hmm. did the typical our way. And, and then once we would look in the book, we'd go, oh, well, let's do the model. And then it would work. And we, we would have saved a lot of time if we did just set it up according to the MREA. Right. Um, so what, any more background stuff we should share? You know, I brought this book because I said Tigo was going to talk about it because this is what you got, Tigo and Tracy, you guys always said this is what changed your life. So um, I brought mine along just in case, but yeah. I knew you would. Yeah. Um, if, and we have chat. So if you have any questions or you want us to cover anything, just let us know. Yeah, we'll just... watch it. So, so I started in real estate and really I just you know, sent out my first postcard, which everybody said doesn't work. And I actually got a really nice listing from my first crappy little postcard. So it really wasn't about all the thought that went into it. It was just doing something and um, it worked. People said you have to do postcards for months. And mine was just a simple little ugly, tiny postcard. And it was beautiful uh, the way it worked. That reminded me of a Ben Kenny uh, uh, saying where it's like, yeah, you can you can have the worst scripts and, you know, be the worst on the phone, but as long as you're doing it, you're going to get results eventually. Yep. They don't know. So before you get started, why don't you give a little indication of where you are now on your team? Tell us a little bit about what your team looks like, and then maybe talk a little bit about the steps you took to get to that place. And, you know, the things that you did well, the things that you like, oh, that was not the greatest decision. Oh, man, and, I don't uh, think we have enough time to do that. You mean the <laughs> right. things we've done, the bad decisions, the, the, the mistakes? Yeah. yeah, no, they're they're It's better than nothing. And yes, done is better than perfect, Heather. Boy, for sure. Time. Um, Boy, that true. If you wait for perfect, you'll never get anything done. <laughs> 
So right now we have. <laughs> okay, um, wait, we got to just clarify something here, right? So the so dog and pony show. The, Tracy's the D, right? If everybody knows the disc, right? Tracy's <laughs> all D, right? She's I only, have, only I D. have D. That's it. She has D, right? She's like, boom, boom, boom. Okay. And I'm, I'm the, the S, the C, I'm the like, no, it needs to be perfect. I can't do it until it's perfect. Right. And so I need we, to study that spreadsheet, Tito, and, and, right? and I'm going to jump ahead of the story just a little bit here, but we had a coach, um, Pat, Pat, Man Pat Van Cuso, uh, a, a maps. I've got my, we actually just got off our maps coach just before we joined you guys. Um, Joe Bogar is our coach, which is, we're so thankful for. He's amazing, but, um, um, we can talk about coaching later, but anyway, Pat was an expert at the old, what was it called? AVA? Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah. It was in, it was before KPA. Just a disc even. It was, well, even the disc, but really coaching us and recognizing what my strengths are, what her strengths are, and that that we, we, we need to understand each other and how we think. And that don't, not only helped us in our business, but also in our personal life as well. And it's like, she goes, oh, wait, he needs time to process, even though I decided 10 minutes ago, right? And I need to go, oh, okay, all right. I know she just wants to move. I just, okay, I need a second just to catch up to her. So anyway, I just wanna, I wanna put that out there because that actually has been a big help for us. Um, okay, totally. right now, the team. Right now we're really large. It's kind of are we crazy to even we're not say Lance, we're not Lance Loken no, large. No, but for little old Albuquerque and our little team from me being a part-time realtor to where we are now with no plan and no um, goal of ever doing what we're doing right now. It was not, not even now, back then. Back then I had yeah. no we had no vision this was coming. So we have about 37 team members right now. We closed 134 million last year. It was 523 transactions. Um, we've added a few people, so we're a little bit bigger right now in this first two months of the year. Um, we've got basically four transaction people on staff. We have a listing manager. We have two ISAs. We have an office manager. We have a director of sales. We have a sign and lockbox guy. Um, and then we have, you know, roughly 20 people in sales, more, more mm -hmm. like 16 that really produce. We have a couple people with different goals that we accommodate that, you know, maybe are, have three kids at home that they're homeschooling and COVID taking care of. I don't know what it's like there, but here we're still pretty restricted. Um, so, you know, that's kind of our, our team. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes we'll say, well, we have this many people and like, well, you should be doing even more business. Like, well, we, we, we did kind of let go of that whole notion of, of, um, oh, you have, you have to have a minimum. You have to do two sales a month or you're out. Right. We, we just, kinda, or you have to be full time. We're, or you we're, have to be full time. Yeah. We kind of let that go. As long as the person's not, sorry, I got a chair problem. A here. drain or making bad decisions if they're good at their job and they want to do Six not. a year and be coached with us. Great. If you know, we're, we accommodate everybody as long as they're um, on point with how they do real estate. If they're not a burden on our system, if they're not a dragging us down, if they're not calling us at 1030 at night to say, how do I write a purchase agreement again? Oh no, they can call me. I know they can. I mean, that's what we do, right? I mean, we, you know, our, it's funny. I call my, my title team support. Um, Cause that's really what I do. Um, you know, and, and, and like in our Slack channel on our, on our team for communicating, um, we call basically Tracy, myself, our office manager and our sales manager, the support team, not the management team or the support team, right? Just like the TCs, they're the support team for the salespeople. So, you know, we try to use that mindset. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, Thinking about some of the things along the way, you know, like Tigo mentioned, we've done coaching with maps on and off over the years. Um, we've done coaching with other groups too, you know, right. through the years, Culture you know, and, there was a, we had an early, early on coach probably in 2008 eight? that wasn't, I, I don't even think she was there, married there was, to our webmaster. Yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of maps stuff at that time. And so 
yeah, she really kicked us off and got us going in the right direction. Some systems and direction for sure. It was funny. I remember when we had that coaching call, it's a good story, you know, early on and she's like, okay, you need to have 20 listings at all times. We're like, 20 listings are that's that's insanity that's not even possible you know i think there was one point last year where we had 110 listings right or something like that um that would have been like march 13th the day covid sent yeah, everybody home exactly yeah um so what what i just love i mean in five years you have come to 134 million you're you've got an awesome team and you have always kind of had that thought about it's not necessarily going to be a Lance Loken or, or any, uh, you know, whatever. It's going to be your team and you're going to, to, to help grow these people in their lives. And I, I just love that about you. And the fact that you are, I mean, Tigo, I remember you were once teaching this, something in here, and you made a comment to everybody in the classroom that um, don't let the numbers scare you especially when you get in the back half of the book, because those numbers, when you get to the mil millionaire real estate agent book, when you look at database numbers and contacts and what you need to have, and those numbers got really silly, crazy. And you said, don't let them scare you because I'm kind of there now. And you, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a, it's a gradual. And I think that's when you talked about that you didn't have a vision to get to be this, but here you are. Your business has just been scalable throughout. And, and what do you think has created the consistent growth and the consistent upward trend in your business? What, what is it that you're doing that's scaling it up? What's well, I will say it hasn't always been that way. We, we've had our share of plateaus. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember, I think there was like three years in a row where we had like, Seven, 70 transactions were like, oh, we can't break through. You and know, then we what, hit what? 300, 300, 300, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then last year, or anyway, we went from four. 75-ish to 523. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, I mean, it's, so, I, I think part of it is Stephanie is always going back, reevaluating where you're at, what you have. Um, I know one of the things that's really worked for us in that exercise is the org chart of the future, mm. right? So you say, okay, what does my org chart look in two years, five years, 10 years? And then you work backwards and say, okay, well, what are the key positions or how many people do I need to, to get to that position, get to that point, right? And so we build that out in our GPS um, of course, I build it out in a spreadsheet as well. It's like, okay, if we need this many transactions and we want this much volume and we want this and, and each person's doing whatever, 24 deals a year average or whatever the number is. Um, okay, how many salespeople do we need? Okay, and then how many, how many transaction people do we need to support them? And what type of lead generation do we need to support that, go. right? So it's just, it's just doing the math. Um, you know, and I love spreadsheets. So I spend, you know, I put that stuff all together in a spreadsheet. So, so just interjecting here. So this year during the pandemic, you know, things have had to shift a bit. What are your consistent lead gen levers now? Well, you know, of course now it's, it's database, database, right? Of course, you know, and, and how many it, are in it, your it database? Has been, 30,000. Yeah. I, I know that intimately because we're, we're actually transitioning to a different, um, is anybody from KW corporate listening? Nope. We're, we're not listening? using command. It we're not doesn't using work command. for our team yeah, yet. It just, it, okay. just, it, it just doesn't scale. It, it just not to, uh, anyway, anyway, we don't need to go down that road. Anyway, we're, we're switching to follow-up boss. And, and so I've been working on that actually recently to um, bring that database in. And it's about 30,000, but you know, that's, people in our database, those are names and phone numbers. That doesn't mean they're really our SOI, right? You know, our, our, our core is, how many do we send out the viral? I don't remember, a couple thousand? No, it's way more than that. 5,000. But one, yeah. of the, anyway. one of the things that we do very consistently every two weeks is send out some sort of video in email to the whole database. And then, you know, as people opt out, fine, great. But we then get a report and it shows us who opened it. 
so we can see who's still interested in real estate and follow up with the people who are watching our videos consistently. And then there's a lot of call to actions in the story that goes with it. So it says, what's your home worth? Or I need to buy now, or um, I'm just curious about blah, 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 or my neighborhood. So there's always calls to action in there. And it usually shakes out a couple phone calls or emails every two weeks from the database. Um, and then let, let me go back to her question real quick. Oh, what was the, well, I was just going to say, levers. yeah, the, the, you know, making sure that everyone on the team has time blocked so that they're keeping up with their SOI and their past clients. And then we have, you know, we have calendared anniversary dates of when they bought the house, we send written cards, we have all sorts of different ways to keep in touch with our database, because obviously those are the most affordable ways to get business. Right, so, right. Without yeah. a doubt. You know, we do, we do events, even through COVID, we did some um, photo days, actually, tra uh, tra well, Jane, you know, Jane, obviously, Jane. Yeah. Tracy's, and Kate, she knows Kate. Kate. That's yeah. right. But Kate's anyway, a professional photographer so, in the family. So Kate is uh, uh, of my niece, her niece. She's a professional photographer. So we brought them in. We had photo day, even during COVID. We did where they those was... doorstep ones, front mm -hmm. porch, where yep. you oh, go oh, from oh. house to house and take a picture of however they wanted to be at their house in front on, on the front patio or porch or whatever they have. Well, and then we set up like a little thing in the front of our office where, uh, outside with like a scene, like a, a fall scene, right? So we did like a, a Halloween, you know, fall time one where they could come in and do their fall and get photo a with their kids and get a pumpkin. And so, you know, we've still been trying to do some events. And, you know, the thing that I think people miss on the whole um, events thing, it's not the event itself and how many people shows up, show up, it's the invite it's the touch, it's reaching out and showing, right? It's the invite and just saying, hey, we're doing this for everybody. And it's not the email invite. It's the phone call to those people who you worked with in the last couple of years that, you know, know you, love you, calling them saying, I just want to make sure you know you're invited. We're going to be giving out a pumpkin and I'm sure your three kids would love it. It's the phone call. It's a reason to call versus saying, I need you to buy or sell with me, right? It's right. It's all that non-threatening stuff that just is a touch base. So when they, they come across somebody, they think of you. Let, let me just go back to lead lovers real quick. So we talked about database. Um, we're Zillow, right? You know, we do, we do a fair amount of business with, you know, through, through that um, pipeline. And yeah, I don't, I don't want to go down that road too far, but I just want to say, it's like, you know, if, if you're doing anything like that, Zillow, realtor.com, pay-per-click, um, you know, which we kind of do a little bit, um, anything where you quote paid for leads, right? Where you're actually doing something, paying money to get somebody to reach out to you. You got to watch it like a hawk, right? You got to watch that so close, right? I, I track those numbers. Um, I use a, a platform called Sisu. If you haven't heard of it, there's CTE, there's, there's a bunch of different tracking There's some um, good old fashioned spreadsheets. There's good old fashioned spreadsheets, but man, you, you've Pens got to pencils. know what you're spending and what your ROI is um, on, on things like that in particular. Cause I know for sure that every Zillow closing costs us about $1,200. Okay. So I have to wow. go, okay, does that, does that still make sense for us? And at the moment it still does just because it keeps, you know, it, because, because you got to look at it, not just that one sale, right? You got to look at, okay, now that is a past client as well. What's the value of that in the future true too. So, so we do a lot of that stuff. So um, the other thing we do is we've done a radio show every Saturday for seven plus years, which is why we're sitting here with branding. microphones yeah. <laughs> and a screen behind us and lighting so that we try to look decent with the the whole thing because our radio show also goes live on Facebook. So we're and YouTube and podcast and stuff. So I want to talk about branding and Stephanie, you know, this pretty well. We've at least my, myself, I I've really embraced uh, the branding. Okay. Um, we've, we started radio advertising when you were our team leader and you you're familiar with that, you know, what we did there. So we started doing the radio ads which nobody had done in our market. Um, we did that, you know, pretty well for a while. We, we're we're kind of doing it not quite as much anymore. 
but just just the whole overall branding thing. My my goal around that is when somebody is online looking for real estate, searching for real estate, searching for a realtor, searching for um, anything related to real estate, how's the market, what are home prices in Albuquerque, w- whatever it is, some at some point, they're going to stumble across us. They're going to see our name, right? Yep. Our Google profile, our Yelp profile, our Zillow profile, our realtor.com profile, our website. Now, now again, S- Stephanie knows this, but we built, you know, going back to the original, the early days, we built our business in 2000 you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, right? When everybody was just struggling and we lost, you know, half of the realtor community went out of the business. Our business was growing, doubling every year. And it's because of, at that time, SEO, search engine optimization. So that was kind of the- thing Our that, online presence. Our online presence, people finding us. And we were actually, you know, we had buyers in 2010. Can you imagine that, right? That would be just like having listings right now. You know, it's so funny how we switched, but, um, and, and so we've continued that, that whole branding play where, and now we're doing, again, we're doing podcasts, we're taking our podcast and we're creating little mini podcasts and, and sending those out. So just, just keeping our name out in front of us. And I will just say this, um, this is something that really struck me yesterday. A couple of things happened is that. In this current market, um, that's going to be the people that win. Is there are a lot of I, I watched a, a Tom. I'm getting way off track here, you but, are. No, but no, it's good. It's <laughs> it's good. It's right. I'm going down this rabbit Sorry, hole. Sorry, but none of that was on my agenda. I, I, I'm I, just kidding. If anybody says, tell them to shut up on the chat, then I will. Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> let me write that real quick. <laughs> um. I watched a I watched an interview with Tom Ferry last night, and if you don't know who Tom Ferry is, you got to know who Tom Ferry is, right? I mean, he's he's not in the KW ecosystem, but you know he is a thought leader in our industry, like Cape Cod by far. Watched an interview with him last night, and he, uh, if you want to search for it, it's Tom Ferry Y Lopo. It was on the Y Lopo um, YouTube channel. And uh, it's just in the last week or so. Why Lopo is a lead gen platform. Anyway, he, um, thank you, Tracy. You're very welcome. What does that say when it pops up? Who's, who's that coming from? Is that coming? What is the name on that chat? I'm just curious. Did it come from me? What name does that say? Okay. I don't know who is logged into to, um, Zoom here. She's going to kill me in a second, isn't she? She's I know. Like, she oh is. I, I like, know her well. <laughs> get to your darn point already. My point is people 10%, this is what he said, and I, I believe it. He said 10% of homeowners are going to be thinking about selling their home this year. Think about that. 10%, at least thinking about That's selling. one in 10 as you go down the street, right? right? So that means one in 10 people in your database are going to be thinking about selling their home this year. And when they think about selling their home, who's the first name that's going to come to their mind? That's what you got to think about this year. That's what this year is about. So I wanted to go back to. I know I got way off there, but I thought that was good. Solo agents starting out in business in case there's any like that. So a few tips and tricks, Stacy, for you. Um, Don't sign up for all the people who call you. I want you to be on my park bench. I want you to be on my golf card. I want you to sign up for Zillow. I want you to be on the shopping cart. Shopping cart, sorry. Don't do any of that. That's all a waste of money. Don't, you know, be on the golf card for the school or honestly, for us at this point, something like shopping cart may make sense because I'm yeah, anyway. no, I'm not going to do it. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to do not it. It's not the I'm just, best resource. I'm just saying because it's, again, it's, we're, we're playing this bigger game of branding and being, being a name that everybody thinks about out there in real okay, estate. Okay. So back to my point. So don't do it. Everyone wants to get in your pockets and they're going to tell you it's the way to do it. You know, the way to do it is to network, get your name out. 
Talk to people who already know you and love you. Don't feel bad when your best friends and your former coworkers don't want to work with you or you find out they bought or sold with somebody else because they didn't know you as the realtor. Um, I had the problem. I had 900 people I knew by name at my company uh, when I got into real estate that I had known from my past job. And not one of them thought of me as a realtor. They thought of me as the HR rep. And they didn't work with me. And I'd find out that somebody I know or somebody that's like a friend did something with another person, you know, and you're like heartbroken. They cheated it on takes me. a while for them to get you as their realtor. And it's a lot easier today because of social media, you know, you can put it out there and do things. So my best advice is like, if you're going to post something on Facebook, don't say, who do you know? I need a buyer. Or I have a seller. Or blah, blah, blah. Just go out and say, oh my gosh, look at this cool pool I saw while showing houses today. Or look at this llama out in the field. I was in the valley today showing houses and I saw this llama. He wanted to talk to me. But... Are there in Oklahoma? Do you guys have any cows around there or anything right. like that? Hey, or... we have llamas. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I know. Wait, wait, what do you have? You have you have cows and oil wells or are you not in that oh. part of Oklahoma? Okay, got it. So, so do things that are very, you know, fun and not call me for all your real estate needs, do stuff. So they know you're out doing the business, but not saying, who do you know that needs to buy or sell or invest in real estate? Call me, you know, post fun things, show your client at closing. Yay. That's always fun, but it's not as, it's not as impactful as maybe a short three minute, three minute, 30 seconds. You know I mean, of, of walking through the coolest house you've ever seen or the view from a cool house, because maybe you don't want to show somebody's personal property in your video, but, you know, a street scene, a park nearby the house you saw, uh, you know, those kind of things are so much better than um, call me. I, I, I wanted to, um, to go back to something Tracy said, you know, the, the, you know, we haven't had trade shows in the last year, right? But when you go to those shows and you've got the whole thing and you've got the people selling you this or that or whatever. And it's like, I, my, my rule was if somebody says you only need one closing to pay for it, that's, I was walk done. Away. I'd walk away. That was my rule. It's like, if you use that line on me, I'm done with you. You're dead to me because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing any of this for one closing that will just cover my cost. Right. I need a, a three, four times, you know, ROI minimum. So anyway, I just, I, that was, that was my rule. Well, when trade shows come back, you know, we, we usually, you know, obviously like the Keller Williams convention, they have a whole room of vendors and they want us to support those vendors. How many closing gifts have we bought over the year that we never, never ended up using? Never used. Yeah. Entertainment cards, different things that Speaking of we're mistakes. terrible with. So, so our, 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 our other rule, is our other can't. rule on that was if, if, if it's at the show and they're trying to close you right there and say, it's only good today. It's like, no, it's good next week. Trust me. You know, when you call them back, don't buy it on the floor. Anyway, off track. That's it. That's what I was going to say. Don't buy so, it. So what if you guys had to do this year with the market of the moment? Uh, what kind of pivoting have you had to do and what was happening when you were, did, were you able to, sh were you guys essential? Were you able to work? Were you able to show property? So originally we were essential, and then in November, or Stephanie, so we you know the politics of New Mexico. Yeah, we but, were we've been pretty shut down, more, more actually more so than just about any other state. But we, as a team, obviously, I've got my technology guru here. We've already got screens all over our office. We were already doing Zoom or in person when COVID hit, so we were very well equipped to already have our team meetings online. We've already sold tons of houses through uh, FaceTime or Duo or Google Hangouts or whatever online chat format uh, video we have. So we were all pretty well equipped already to show a house virtually. Um, you know, the whole gloves, booties, face masks thing got pretty intense for a while. Um, but, you know, we trained our, our sellers to leave closet doors open and things they wanted clients to see maybe one drawer in the kitchen so they could see the quality of the the drawer and wood but um you know we we adapted we got word out really quickly through our team on how to adapt and do it and it's funny because you know i saw a lot of people back then posting online saying well 
you know, this will only work for the millennials or something. And I'd laugh and I'd say our first sale, Chase sold, um, uh, Chase is my eight year Navy. For, for, first sale of first of the sale of, of the COVID yeah. was to like an 80 year old woman who lives two hours, an hour and a half, two, hour, two hours south of town and um, Socorro. sight unseen with a video chat. And I'm like laughing because people are, well, that won't work. I'm like, well, it does. <laughs> it works. You just have to have faith and you have to believe and you have to do it. So, you know, one of the topics I really wanted to get to Stephanie, if it's okay to like shift, yes, um, I just wanted to get to presenting ourselves as realtors. So um, I think part of what makes us really successful in our industry. And when I look at people on our team and the things that we need to talk about with them is how they present themselves confidence wise. So when you show up to meet with somebody, you're the expert. They don't want wishy-washy. They don't want maybe. They don't want, I think. They need you to know your profession. They need you to know your stats. They need you to know the area information. And with technology, we're area experts everywhere now, right? I can find out anything about any neighborhood. I could go to Oklahoma and say I'm an expert because I could get online and know my stats immediately. But when you go, they want you to be tall, stand up, be, be the expert, take charge. If you're going on a listing appointment, show up like I own this house. I'm in charge. I own you. I mean, like, you know, be, be the expert. Has um, anybody ever seen the Ted talk with Amy Cuddy? Is it Amy Cuddy? I think it is about, um, it's, it's the power, the power pose, the power pose, right? So you're doing the wonder woman before you go in, you know, you do the wonder woman before you go in and, and you basically just get your mindset, right? Cause that, that, that physical, you know, obviously it affects your brain, right? If you're like all slouched over in your car and you're like all bummed out before you go into a listing appointment, well, how do you think that's going to go? So, so remember you're the expert, they're relying on you. They don't do this every day. And if you don't have that strength and power, um, get on Craigslist or eBay and buy some cassette tapes. I yeah. know they don't sell those anymore, but that's what I did. I got online and I bought da David Knox tapes and I'd listen to his how to do a listing presentation on my way to every listing appointment. So it would put it back in my brain, his favorite line of mine. Will you cut your commission? No. Next topic, you just change the subject. <laughs> you know, on. it's like, I don't have to justify myself, right? As, as soon as you start going into that hum and ha and well, and you know, and that it's like, well, no, no, it's just that we don't, we don't do that. This is what we charge. It's that whole being prepared for it and practicing it and having it in your brain. So those hard questions that come up, you're ready for, but like take charge, say, why don't you have a seat or whatever, look over the paperwork or the seller's disclosure while I take a tour of your home. Um, you know, just being in charge when you get there, have a plan and execute it. You know, it's, it's be the expert. Um, I just wanted to make sure to say that and make sure that you would hire yourself, you know, talk to yourself. Honestly, would you hire yourself the way you, um, with your knowledge base, how you market and sell and, and how you present? I want to talk about a couple, couple things. Stephanie's here. dying to ask a question. Oh, go ahead, well, Stephanie. No, I was just, I was just going to say, I was on a webinar day before yesterday with Kristen Cole and Ben Kenny, and he was talking about you need to have certain things in your pocket every single day when you go out of the house. You better know your stats and you carry them with you because that is the way you're going to show credibility. I don't care what, who you are, but if you do not know what's going on in the market today, then you're not being the uh, local expert. You're just not. So he was, he and Kristen Cole were talking about that and it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this know your number, know the stats, oh, totally. days on market, et cetera. So that falls right into what you were okay, talking I'm gonna put about. You on the spot. What's, your, what's your average days on market in, uh, in your market? That's not important. So, okay. So it is our, important. Our, and our, I, our, well, I, uh, I will just tell you this. Um, I bet you there's people on here that know that number because I'm not out there selling. I know. I'm sorry. I'm so, putting you on the spot. But sorry. yeah. So what is the average? Who knows that? And median average. Does it, it doesn't matter. It does. It does okay. matter, but it, 
anyway, wow. okay, sorry. Um, so I want to, I want to go ahead. You got something. Well, I was kind of going back to, you know, we're a big team, so we're not like, um, everybody. Right. And I just want to go back to thinking about how do you build your own, your own exactly business, you know, your go. solo yep. agent and just kind of speak to a few thoughts on that, if that's all right. So mm -hmm. think about if I'm going to become a restaurant owner, right. Am I going to go, uh, I'm going to, you've probably heard that one, the donut shop one. Am I going to be a donut shop solo owner? I'm going to go and I'm going to lease a space and I'm going to have a ton of overhead and I'm going to get up at three every morning and make donuts. And then I'm going to go up front and sell the donuts. And then I'm going to clean up when I close at three o'clock or whatever time. And I'm going to do my inventory and I'm going to order all my food and I'm going to run the cash register and I'm going to do my accounting and I'm going to do my books. We're like that, right? We're solo business owners and we have to think like business owners. And, and as we are in our business, we need to set it up so that we are running a business and then deciding as we grow what we should leverage and how we should grow. Do we just want a bookkeeper? Do we just want um, somebody to uh, not, you know, maybe just show houses, uh, how, do, how to grow and be smart about it and remember that we need to set up our business like as if we were going to go and lease space and have that overhead. We're so lucky because someone else owns the inventory. We don't have to buy it to sell it, right? Aren't we lucky? So just, just thinking about how to grow and how to, all the different things, you know, when you look at the, the chart of what I do as a solo broker, and then as I grow, there's that whole chart, right? And what, what things I should leverage out, but I still need to keep in charge of the dollar productive things and my return on investment and my spending and things like that. You know, the, the MREA book says to, you Seems know, like I've heard all that somewhere before. I'm not sure where I've heard that all before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, E-Myth. E E-Myth, if you guys haven't read the E-Myth, you can, obviously you can tell Gary took a lot of of the stuff from him, from the E-Myth about that. And E-Myth is just a great book about, you know, being in business for yourself. It's a must read. Yeah. I, mean, I guess my, my end of that conversation is being a solo agent, being in real estate in any capacity is hard. It's, it's a tough life. Our life is, you know, So I want to, I want to speak to that. So KW, <clears throat> we love KW, right? However, you know, when you go to events, you go and you see people like us, right? Or I won't put myself in the same category, Ben, ben Kenny, right? Or, or Lance Loken. Lance or, or um, you just said Kristen her name, Cole. Chris, Kristen, right? You know, you, you see these people that are just doing these crazy, crazy numbers, right? Expansion teams and all of that. And, and sometimes you kind of feel like, oh, well, if I'm not doing that, I'm not succeeding. And I, I think we got to let that go if, if you have any of that, because being an incredible solo agent is, is, is awesome. And, you know, at some point you have to decide though, okay, am I going to just keep on like this or am I going to leverage myself, right? Am I going to get some leverage? Am I going to hire an assistant? And, and I've seen it a thousand times and okay that's maybe exaggeration but stephanie you've seen it a ton of times that first hire when you're going from solo it's the most difficult hire it's the most important hire and it's usually the wrong hire the first time and so usually what what i've seen happen many many times and i know stephanie you've seen this too they hire the assistant because their hair's on fire and they just need some help and in the end, it actually set them backwards as opposed to moving them forward. Mm -hmm. Well, and they hire usually someone to, to be a showing person instead of an admin. Or yeah, w whatever it is, or they think, oh, the first hire should be a buyer's broker. Well, I'll just hire a buyer's broker and now they'll be, no. Yeah, the, your first hire is an admin. Unless you are the admin, then you're probably not very successful anyway, right? So your first hire is the admin. Your first hire is your, your director of operations. 
your first hire becomes your boss. Your first hire should be telling you what you need to be doing, right? So um, that's a really hard, really hard transition because you're doing 20 units a year, let's say, right? And, and I don't know, Stephanie, what do you think? What's the numbers where you, where you would say, okay, it's time to start thinking about some leverage? You know, I think it really depends. Um, I always use the the 25 to 30, somewhere in there is where you're probably going to need, we're, we're seeing a lot of people hire the TC first. And so they get the leverage on, you know, contract to close stuff. And then, sure. and then they start the next hire is another admin that's going so to be not? taking care of all of the other things. And then, you know, we're seeing the, the showing assistant come into play, quite frankly, more often than a straight buyer's agent. Yep. So, um, but there's, you know, every team is different and, and group is different. So they may bring a buyer's agent in, they may bring someone in that's working both sides, the buyers and the sellers. So um, it just, it just really depends. But I think the key to what you're talking about is if we don't take them through a process and, you know, fortunately we have the process with revisioning and the KPA to find out, I mean, even the disc, I said, if nothing else, just take the disc and see if those, those details of the details, if they have that in them or not, because oftentimes we hire someone because we like them. Oh, I love her. I love him. He's, they're awesome. But if they're, it's not in their wheelhouse or their skill set, then, um, you know, that would, that would be like me trying to do detail. It just, it's not in my wheelhouse. I could probably do it. Oh, yeah. Forever. If, if, if you hire a D for admin, you're in trouble. Right? Well, a you're, lot of us got a problem. as yeah. solo agents, we can do it all, right? We can do it all. It's just you have to. enjoy or thrive. You know, at the end of the day, if we do things all day that drain us, we're probably doing the wrong things, right? That's a great way. That's a great way to determine whether, whether it's not in your wheelhouse, if you have not taken the KPA. Yep. So, so, so what, tell me a little bit about um, this team organization that you have and what are you doing to, because I know that on people on your team, their lives get changed being apart because you're growing other leaders and, and, you know, Tracy, I don't even know if you're still out there listing houses anymore. I'm, Typically, no, just for like certain past clients and friends or neighbors, but typically I try to turn everybody over because my, so the big why you hear it all the time. What's your big why? So Tigo and I finally figured out our big why, and luckily it's the same. We did. Yeah. Oof. I'm Tracy told to you what it was. Tell you what yours is. Yeah. <laughs> the D in me. So, you know, our thing is, um, the joy we get out of taking somebody and helping them do more than they ever thought they could do in their life. And like Chase, who I mentioned earlier is a good example choice. Chase moved to New Mexico when he got out of the Navy, his sister lived in the area. I didn't know what he was going to do. So he started working at a restaurant, minimum wage or something at a yep. restaurant yep. Part -time. and is, yeah. you know, yeah. and was like, why don't you get into real estate? And so he got his license and now it's been four years or so. He sold 60 houses yep. last year, mostly to buyers. He maybe had one listing because it was a past client. Um, he loves VA, of course, because he's Navy. And um, he, he like will break down and tell you, he goes, you know, I never ever in my wildest dreams thought I would ever make over $50,000 a year. And you know, you don't sell 60 houses. <laughs> He's obviously, you know, well over a hundred thousand. I think he was more like 150 or 160,000 in earnings last year. And it's, it's just life changing. What, yeah. what we feel, you know, we, we can, um, we can take less as a, as a owners and team to give back and to see people flourish and, and change their lives and be a part of that transformation. It's pretty awesome. We always say we could go back to just Tigo and I and an assistant and make the same amount of money, probably be a lot less headaches. We wouldn't make the same amount, but we'd make no. enough. Um, but for us, it's all about what we have here and how we support each other. And we have a very stable team. I know there's can be a lot of turnover and I, 
it's inevitable. We, we've been there. We've been there. I just wanted to address Heather. You've got the C. So, you know, you're, th that's the key, right? If you don't have the C and all, you're all DI, Stephanie, not talking about anybody. If you're all DI or all I, yeah. you can't, you, you just can't sit and focus on details, right? So sorry, I'm getting short off. term. You can. Yeah. Short term, maybe, but it's going to suck the life out of you. Sorry, I, we're having two conversations here, but I think it was, I wanted to address that because I think it's, it's, a, it's a good observation, Heather, that yeah, you can be, in fact, a DC is awesome because you want an admin that's pushing you, right? You want somebody that's saying, hey, we can do this better. Hey, you should be doing that. Hey, you should, that's what you want. Sorry, I got, I, I digress. Um, well, you know, I, I want to touch based on what you just for, said. Let's make sure we leave time for open questions because I'm. It, yep. we, could, we could be here. I'm going I'm, I'm to make one more comment okay. because Tracy, I was going to even ask you this: Was there ever a time in these last years that you thought, "Why do we have this huge, massive machine?" Because I have heard it from agents that have built teams, and maybe they've got eight, ten people on their team, and they're like, "I could make the same amount of money with just myself." and a couple of other people. But see, what you hit was that difference, which is I'm changing other people's lives. The we're, people that are, are on part of it. Yeah, we're a part of it. They have to want it, but. But yeah, yeah. yeah. you have the ability to do that. And so, honestly, no, I I'm, I'm I have no regrets and we don't have, with we all have the, that, the chat. We have that conversation all the time. You know, it's like, Especially when you get the, the, the pissed off client because somebody on your team did something stupid and you got to deal with it. You know, you're like, what? it's not worth it, you know? It's like, but not yeah. really. You don't really think no, that. No, I know. I'm just saying. It's like, you know, you know, if I was doing it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have gone sideways. But because they were doing it, and my, you know, anyway, who knows? Well, why don't we open this up? We've only got a few more minutes left. Why don't we open this up for any questions? Who's got questions for my friends? Missy Webb, the last time I saw you was in Florida at Amplify, but I just like sought you out because Stephanie said, you've got to meet my friend. But it was a very brief hi. I'm totally entertained right now, by the way, watching you and your husband. So, you know, we do the radio show and we do the Facebook live. Well, we post it like it's live. And um, it's, you know, I think the more entertaining we can be, the better, because I don't want to be too boring, you know? The, the, our team meetings can, can get a little, um, anyway. So, you know, so Missy, it's inappropriate, it, but. Missy is in uh, business with her husband. Yeah. So that's why she's probably chuckling. Right, hey, Missy? The, the the office just turned on. You guys got questions there? No, I was going to tell you that the average house in Oklahoma market sells for 1% less than this in 19 days. Wow. Oh, wow. Boom. Okay, so I want you to meet Tom Orr. Thank you, Tom. Hey, Tom. Yay. So that's Tom my thing in, in, in actually, let me just give you a little, little talking about, go ahead and finish that. Sorry, Stephanie. I'm no, sorry. I'm just, yeah, I can go ahead. What were you going to say? So, you know, I've been doing stats since you've been around, right? And, and putting stuff, I've been doing monthly videos for the most part about, you know, market updates. Um, really, really focused on that. Again, this is part of the whole branding thing. Be the expert, be the one. Last two times, the, the guy at the Albuquerque Journal, which is our local paper, has uh, done a story on real estate. He's called me. So now I'm on, I'm in the mix, right? You know, we've been doing this radio show for seven years. You know, the one thing that's interesting about the radio show, it's made us go out and have something of value to bring every single week. It forces us to have good information about the real estate market, what's going on in the real estate market, actually know our business. It's actually forced us to do that, it forced us to do that, which I, I, it's been- Forced to go to do that. I just show up and go, huh? <laughs> And, and make silly comments and yes. pretend I'm prepared and so, for the show, I mean. Yeah, and it's not a, a call-in show. It's actually, we record it and just play it back. Um, so it, it's, you know, I mean, it's recorded live. <laughs> you know, it's not like we, we chop it up or edit it or anything. It's just, we just go right through. 
Um, so we have to bring the content. We don't have we don't have people calling in uh, asking questions. So we have to to do that. We've done those shows too, but um, being an expert and knowing your market um, is great. If if you ever want to go down that road, I don't know if anybody's using a product called KCM. Keeping and Current Matters. MyKCM.com or Keeping Current Matters. It's cheap, you know, to, to get their We just said don't spend money. Remember I know a while did. ago? You got it, Kimberly? Yeah. Use it. Get on their webinars. Be the expert. Listen to their stuff because, you know, some of it, it's all national. Obviously, it's not local. So you got to you gotta mix in the local stuff as well and know those numbers there. Um, obviously, that, that's my big that's one of my favorite things is to do, do the stats and what's going on in the market. What challenges other, well, let me, obviously, listings, right? It's all about listings right now. What's, what's working, what's not working for you guys? It's 25 after. What, let, let me ask you this. I'm gonna turn the question around to you. What are you doing? Because you're struggling probably just like we are with yeah. the listings here. Well, our biggest, we're, we're getting listings. It's just they're selling in two days. And so you can't, you know, you're not getting any buyer leads off of them. We've been trying to figure out strategies on how to do that. We do have a coming soon status, you know, here where we can put it out for a few days. The problem is as soon as you do that, you, it just, everyone's begging the phone, you the to phone blows up in. and people are crying, begging you to get in the house. Um, we're trying to do a grand open house. Try Try trying well yeah i don't like you're right that's that's a what, what did i say call that that's a loser word we're not trying our intention is for every you know for every new listing we bring it on with a a grand open house type event or you know at least make it active or coming soon for a day or so before we start showing it so we can at least generate a little bit of activity and and so that's what we're doing with the listings again We've got more than 20 listings, like we were talking about earlier. They're all in pending. But they're all in pending, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, right? Our median days on market is five days in our market. Our inventory just hit 0.4 month supply for February. Under our median price is 0.2 month supply. What is that? 10 days, right? I mean, under our median, there's just, it's, it, Stephanie, under 200,000, you know our market. We used to have those all day long. Yeah. Tracy did a West Side Rio Rancho search for under two hundred thousand. They don't exist. There's like two. and the result was zero. They're like there's like and they're and they're you know teardowns. Wow. It is crazy. Wow. Anyway, I, I. Well, we only have a couple more minutes, and I I keep to our time here. Does anybody have any questions, comments for my friends? Go Kim. Yeah. So what are you guys doing to actively go and try and find more listings? Like people that like in your database or people that, you, you know, in your sphere, we can what is something out there to our, our, our guys that are hammering the phones right now? But. Yeah, we have a couple of people right there just calling neighborhoods and uh, looking, saying we just sold a house in your neighborhood and we have more buyers, 17 offers, and those people are still waiting. But um Circle prospect. We, we're doing in our, you know, videos, we're doing call of action where what's your home worth and that type of thing. But, you know, Tigo mentioned something to someone else earlier this week, and they were saying, you know, the Zillow's and Trulia's and Realtor.com's of the world can't even figure out how to get sellers. So okay, let, let me, this is a really interesting story. So, so um, you get like a half a minute. I can Tigo. do that. I can do this. No, I can't. You know, I can't. What, what's her name? Um, Renee? Uh, no, 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 no. At uh, at KW, our 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 PC coach in our Michelle our Anderson, Center. not Michelle. No, no. no. Anyway, oh, she, Kara Shug. You know, they Kara. don't know. Stephanie knows Kara. Anyway, she, I know Kara. Yes, we do. Thirty seconds I, already. Yeah, you keep interrupting me though. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, this is just. So, she she was asked to do a a panel, a coaching panel for goal management, which is our part of our, you know, KW group about how to generate more listings. Okay. And it's like, Oh, great. Sounds awesome. Great topic. And I, and, and I finally came down to this after a long conversation is 
Zillow spends a billion with a B dollars a year on technology, on data scientists, on algorithms, on you name it, on, on generating leads. They have not been able to crack that code. Okay. What makes you think we're going to crack that code? We're not going to crack that code. We're not going to just have a silver bullet that suddenly leads, leads for listings are just going to start falling from the sky. It's our database. It's our database. It's our database. It's reaching out to our clients. Go watch that video that I talked about earlier. Tom Ferry, Y Lopo. He nails it. He nails it. He talks about reaching out to your database and saying, it's bananas out there, texting them. Hey, how you doing? Just thinking about you, man, the real estate bar market is just bananas out there right now, but actually using the bananas emojis and saying, um, and then it was, you know, have you thought about, you know, what your home is worth or the, the market's been crazy. Hey, have you thought about what your home might be worth now? I'd be happy to, you know, give you some info. It's, it's, it's blending the, um, what were we calling it? Uh, the, the reach out where you're just kind of checking in with people, care with calls. The, the, the care calls with a call to action. Yep. Another script that he had, I thought was brilliant was reaching out to people and saying, you know, I, we just been thinking about this, just calling clients and wondering, you know, in this last year, it's been crazy, right? It's just been what a year we've gone through, but I'm really curious to hear from clients what the meaning of home means to you. How has home changed for you in the last year? Because we're trying to get all this information just so we kind of have an idea of, of how people are feeling about home now. Again, the care call could lead to a conversation about what's my home worth, right? Yep. So, so are you, I'm going to ask one more question because we, our time is up, but I have one question. Are you guys, are you making any calls around the forbearance? No. Um, Nope. Not a thing. Don't, Not don't at count all. at it. Not I, even looking. I, I don't want to go down that road. It's going to be a thing, but it ain't going to be a big thing. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I just wanted we, to get your input on that. We did talk about that a little bit in that there are people that are going to, you know, probably maybe have to sell. There's going to be some people that are going to um, maybe have to do short sale. And there's going to be even a really small number that might end up in foreclosure. Of course, we can't help them. But I, the, the script that we've been using is, Hey, if you are in trouble, not, you want to say you're in trouble. Hey, if you know anybody that's just, you know, in having a hard for, time forbearance plan and they're not sure what to do, they're not sure how, what the, you know, how to get out of this. They don't think they're going to be able to keep making their payments. You know, have them call us. Let's have a private conversation about your options because yeah. there are some great options you, that, that they may not, again, it's right. they, not you, it's they might not even be aware of on on how to to work through this prog pro process the reality is there's only two point some million in delinquency in the country right now which is yep. a far cry from the five million we had back at the beginning and so and most of those people have equity in their homes right that's the difference nothing that's like 2008 difference. where nobody had equity or very it was it was remember that negative equity remember that so okay Thanks, well, guys Thank you so much, Tigo and Tracy. Great seeing you. Tell everybody I said hi. Miss you tremendously, you. and we'll catch up later. And thank you thank all you. for participating. Bye, all right. Bye, bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you.